If your business is in need of a multi-stage approval process, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be building from scratch that very thing using Airtable and Airtable alone. Now, before we get started, do know that you could build a lot of really nice advanced automation on the back end of this. But what we're going to be talking about here is just the front end part, the structure of the data that you'll need inside of your Airtable database. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everybody, my name is Gareth Bronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses build organized and automated systems, allowing them to grow their business and spend less time in the weeds doing the admin work. So if that's of interest to you, before we get going, definitely click subscribe to this channel. Also, if you're interested in just leveling up your Airtable game, this is the place for you. Click that like button and get subscribed. But without further ado, let's just jump on into my screen and you'll see that I have started um, a very simple base. I haven't done anything here yet other than start from scratch. Now, before we get building, first we should talk briefly about what it is that we're building. So imagine that we have some sort of a project or a signature or agreement or contract or something that needs multiple stages of approval before it can be you know, completed or, or considered checked off. Well, this is a pretty common use case for a lot of businesses, and it's something that we can pretty simply build inside of Airtable. It's a two table solution. So the first table that we're gonna start with here is going to be our, um, our agreement table or our project table. Whatever this thing is that needs to be signed off on is what this table is gonna be. So let's assume it's, it's, um, it's just a legal agreement, for example. And there's probably a lot of information that we're going to capture with that agreement. So there could be a type. So perhaps we have, you know, a single select field where we have multiple different types of agreements. So we could have type one, type two, type three. And perhaps we also link this to contacts. Like maybe we have, uh, you know, a CRM as well. And so we're tying our CRM to these agreements. That's a very possible scenario. Um, I'm not going to be building out that third layer in or that third table for this example. So let's just suppose that we have the contact in this case and it's just a single select field or I'm sorry, a single line text. So I could imagine that perhaps I am the contact that this agreement type two uh, was created for. Now, there are a lot of other data points, of course, that we would want to include here. Uh, we would probably have the email of the contact. And of course, a quick side note is that if we had the contacts in their own table, we would just look this field up using a lookup field. But because, again, because we don't have a contacts table in this example, we're just going to have to use uh, good old fashioned typing. All right, so we have the email address and then, you know, uh, we could talk about different, uh, different things that need to be included with this might also include a PDF version, the attachment of the document itself, uh, various things and this will this will obviously be different for every business and that's kind of the point of Airtable because it's so modular you can build what you need but I'm gonna stop at this point for our legal agreements let's suppose that this is all we're tracking oh well and one other thing the uh, date of the agreement as well and we can just bring in a date field here and in this case perhaps I am just gonna say uh, today's date 1020 all right the last piece before we get moving to our next table is we need to actually give this a unique name. So this will be the legal agreement ID. And I'll very often use a formula field here and I'm just gonna concatenate or string together multiple pieces of data that give this a unique instance. In, in this case, we might include the, uh, first of all, the type of legal agreement. And then we might also have um, a contact. And if we really wanted to get unique, because maybe this contact, maybe contacts could sign the same agreement over and over, uh, we might also want to include the date field in here so that if Gareth were, you know, to f have another type two legal agreement in the future, then this ID here is unique because it is the one associated with this day and the one in the future would have the other day in the name as well. So again, if you're newer to Airtable, just remember that this leftmost field, it's called our primary key, 
is one of the most important fields and making sure that you get the most unique name possible here for all of your different uh, fields is, or for all of your records, getting the most unique, unique name possible is very important. Okay, but moving on from here, let's talk about the next table that we're gonna build and that is the approval process. And so essentially every time there is a new, um, a new approval that it will be issued, it's gonna be issued and recorded against the legal agreement. So let's suppose, for example, this type two legal agreement um, needed two people on our team to sign off on it. So I would expect to see two records here where each person was, you know, had their own place that they had to go and sign off on this. So the first thing we'll need to do, of course, is link the agreements to the approval process. So we need to add a link here to approval. And I'm going to just link to it like this. And I need to allow linking to multiple records here because we already said more, more than one approval will be needed for some projects or for some agreements. And now that we have that built, the reciprocal of that relationship is true. So if agreements is linked to approval, then approval is also linked to agreement. And we can turn this off here, meaning we only want every record of an approval is only going to link to one agreement, meaning that you can't approve more than one agreement at the same time. You need to fill out a different record for each of those. All right, we're going to go ahead and save. And now we could imagine just how easy it would be to link to this agreement. Here's that agreement that we have uh, created here that is, as of today, the type 2 agreement, the agreement here in the table. All right. So what else do we need on this approval process? Well, we need to know who it is that's approving this, right? So this would be the person in charge. And very often what you'll do here is include a collaborator field. Now the collaborator field allows you to add anybody who this database is shared with. Now because this is a private database, I haven't shared it with anyone, I'm the only person here. So we'll just have to go ahead and select me twice. But you could easily imagine how you'd have more than one person on your team who would be in charge of this. So perhaps this first one is approval by Gareth and the second is approval by someone else entirely. Actually, for the sake of this video, let me suppose that I'll use a single select field instead. And rather than including myself here, um, I'll just add somebody else on my team. So now we have two different people. Now this is gonna function the exact same way as the collaborator field, except the collaborator field has some added benefits to receive notifications for people on your team and things like that. But for the sake of this example, this is gonna do just fine. All right, now we also have to uh, do a date, you know, this will be the approval date uh, or date approved, let's say. And I'm gonna come back to this field in just a moment. Now I'm also going to include a checkbox. So this will be the approval checkbox. And we have that now. And so what we really want to do here with this date approved, we want it to update when this box gets checked. But if this box is not checked, then we don't want there to be a date on the date approved. How can we write this? Well, it's going to be a little bit of a formula. First and foremost, well, let me pause and just rewind here. We can use the last modified time here. And we can specify that we only want it to look at the approval checkbox. And what this means is when that box gets checked, that this is going to get stamped with the last time that the box was checked. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Except that as we uncheck the box, it's then going to tell us when the last time it was unchecked is. So the only time that this is blank, the, the last modified time, the only time that it's blank is when it is uh, never altered. But if it's checked and then unchecked, it's still going to show a date approved. And that's not exactly what we want. So we're going to need to build a little bit of a workaround to that to get this to only show up when we've checked that box. So the first thing we're going to do is run a last modified time here. So this is going to be a last modified on the checkbox. And this is effectively what we already have in that other field. And so this is going to show us when the last checkbox was marked. So far, so good. Now we're going to write a formula that is, this is going to be date approved star, because I already have a date approved. And it's going to be a formula field that says, only in the condition when that box is checked, do I want to have that last modified time. And so we're going to say, if 
the approval checkbox. Nope, sorry, that was the wrong, wrong one. If approval checkbox, there it is, then be the last mod checkbox. Otherwise, be blank. Close that out. We're going to switch over to formatting and we can include a time field and we're going to turn Greenwich Mean Time off. Otherwise, this will be time ahead or behind depending on what time zone you live in. All right, from here, we're going to save. And now when we uncheck that box, this date approved is no longer here. So we can delete our first date approved and we can even hide our last modified checkbox and it won't impact the way that this works. Once we check that box, that date approved gets the timestamp. Perfect. All right. And so then the uh, last part of this is to kind of roll this up back at the legal agreement level. Because what we have right now is the ability for Gareth and then Wyatt to both approve this legal agreement. And we should also name these, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. So once they've approved it, then we will have, you know, two for two effectively filled out, and then we will know that it's fully approved. So let's go ahead and before we get to that, though, we're going to add our approval, uh, approval ID here. Again, remember, you want this to be as unique as possible. And so what I might do is, in this case, bring in the legal agreement name that is associated with this and then also uh, attach the person in charge. And so over here we see that this one belongs to Gareth and he's approving this. Now, it's a bit redundant with my name in here twice, so it's easier to see down here with Wyatt. So Wyatt is responsible for approving this legal agreement type two with Gareth on 1020. All right, so let's run back into our legal agreements now and start rolling these this data up. So the first thing we're gonna do is build a count, um, the approval count. And what this is going to do is it's going to look at the links that we have with from legal agreement to approval and it's gonna count them. Now, of course, in this case, we know we have two links, right? We linked here two times, one, two. So we need two different people to sign off on the approval process. Easy enough. And Airtable knows that automatically because of the number of links. Now, the next part we're going to do is we need to count up the number of checkboxes that we've received. So we can write a quick and easy formula here. This is going to be the uh, checkbox count, or uh, let's call it subtotal. There we go. And I'm going to write a quick formula that just says if that approval checkbox is marked, then count one and otherwise be blank. So only in the case where the box is checked do we get a one here. Now we can hide this again and let's go back to legal agreements and over here we're going to add that up. So this is going to be our approval, um, our currently approved. We're going to use a roll up field here. Look at our approvals, count up the number of checkbox subtotals, and we're going to add them together with a sum. All right, now we've got those. And so now we can qu uh, quickly and easily see how many we need and how many we have. And so we have, we could build a status on here very easily that says something like, if approval count is equal to the currently approved number, then we can say that this is approved. Otherwise, it needs to be not yet approved. And so this quickly and easily knows that it's not yet approved. And we can go ahead and hide these other fields here now. And we just have our status on whether this uh, legal agreement is approved or not. And all we need to do now, and again, this doesn't require any Zapier automation or anything outside of Airtable. This is all internal to the software. What we're going to do now is go over into approval, click approval from Wyatt Earp. And once that has occurred, you'll see that this is now receiving the approved status because we are now two for two in terms of our approval. Now, of course, if we were to add the requirement that somebody else must, um, must approve this, then it would go back to being unapproved, right? Because now we have three people that are required to approve it and only two of them have. So this is not yet approved. 
But then, of course, if Doc Holliday were to sign off on this and check it off, then we see that it's back to approved. So it works quickly and easily, and there's no need for automation or outside um, information or API connections in order to get this to work. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description, and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there, and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice, concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.